Hey everybody, John at IPT. Today we're taking apart an 04 Forester 48T transmission. Um, I'm probably gonna edit some of this and, and take some of it apart off camera because it's rusty and it's gonna be real difficult to take apart. And I'm sure you guys don't wanna see me cursing and hitting on this thing with a hammer like a monkey. All right, first we're gonna get rid of this front diff. Um, if you hear any breathing in the background, my cameraman's got COVID, so uh, please be tolerant of us. Yeah, I'm making them work anyway. On these top two, you have a bracket. So I like to start up here. Then it's um, easier to flip the thing over and get these connectors out of the way so we don't break them. And Penny went ahead and took apart all the external stuff on here that's kind of a pain and it's, it's pretty tedious. You know, brackets, cool lines, uh, cooler fittings. There's springs and a, and a check ball. And I'll, I'll probably show you guys how to put this together when we reassemble it. But I'm sure you don't want to sit here and endure the pain of watching all this stuff come apart. All right, so now get the filter off. Now nah, it's loose already. We got a couple 10 millimeters up here. So these are your speed sensors. Okay. Get that all out of the way. Tip it up. Now, a couple bolts down here, and you typically need to put wrenches on them. Looks like it arrived here. Somebody has taken that axle seal out for us. And now we got to kind of take a baseball swing. So it's going to expose our front differential. These things um, are geared pretty steep. If you look at the pinion, they have very few teeth. It's like something you'd stick in a Dremel. And we have this here, which is um, an important sleeve, right? It's got a seal on both ends, and it keeps all your differential oil from encroaching into the transmission and, and the fluids mixing. We also have this seal here, which is important not to forget because that's that's another seal that keeps your fluid from mixing. You know, that, that vents your, your front seal through here and then um, it comes back through here and it could drain into the sump, into your uh, transmission pan. All right, now we're gonna get these 12s off. And uh, we talked about in the 5EAT video, this little thing is something they use on the assembly line, I think. Um, it's folded up and they use it like to hoist stuff. And then when they're done, they smack it down. So that's not something you have to put back on. And this thing's looking a little crusty. Um, might have to give it some shots to get it apart.
what happens on these is um, there's dowel pins to locate it and they kind of get rusty and that's that's a lot of what sticks these things together. So I got one that stayed up here in the transmission case and the other one stayed in the tail housing. All right, now we have um, your all wheel drive clutch drum. Let's make sure this bearing is good. You have two ceiling rings back here. As you see, I mean, there's not much of an output shaft here. So, you know, in high power applications, I've only seen it once, but this thing can snap off. All right, so what we have in here is a Torrington bearing and a cage bearing. And these are your clutches for all wheel drive. Now these steels are black, but they're not burnt. This is um, a choline coated steel. So this is what the stack up looks like. There's a um, thick plate on the bottom, then a thinner plate, then your clutches alternating with steel plates and then a top plate. So what we do is we usually do that, this, and this, and that kind of keeps it organized for us for when we put it back together. Let's see if this will come out without too much trouble. Yeah. Okay, so this is um, this is the hub that your your clutches ride on, your output transfer gear, and this is another area of concern. These clutches like to beat into this. This one's not bad, but you could see, um, you know, the little marks where they're touching it. And a lot of times, it's really, this is dug into there, and you have to, uh, you have to change this piece. You, you have to change the whole piece. The steel gasket, and we have this. Um, I don't know. We'll call it a rubber bunyak. But this is uh, <laughs> transfers your, your all-wheel drive fluid from the valve body into this, this hole, which goes through this tube, and that's what applies those all-wheel drive clutches. So you don't want to lose this, because then you'll turn the car into a front-wheel drive. Now... We have a special socket for this. I don't know if you could see the part number, but I'll, I'll put it in the description. Y you know, you can use uh, something other than that, but this is, you know, really, you know, what Subaru uses, and it's really a better way to, to take this nut off. And I don't take it all the way off because in a couple of minutes I'm going to have to hit on it. And I really, you know, I don't like to hit on the shaft. All right, now we're going to take the uh, the pinion out. There's a couple more bolts here, but it's it's better to keep this bolted to the case while you um, try and get the pinion out. backhanded so we could watch this. This is kind of um, where this pinion shaft that goes all the way through the transmission and where it goes through the back is often very tight on these splines so we got to And there's also a tool to do this. You see this is threaded here. So I'm assuming at the factory level, they have something that threads on here and a, a bolt that you could run through to um, push everything out. But here in the transmission business, you have a special tool for every single thing. You're going to be broke. So now we have our pinion is out. So there's a bearing on either side. 
and you see there's a seal in here and that's going to keep your differential oil from encroaching into the transmission and vice versa and you're usually going to have one or more shims on here which set your pinion depth So now we're getting to the part that um, this might not want to come apart. We have these long dowel pins that go through this whole pump housing into the case. And when they get rusted and crusted, they kind of uh, are stuck there. So we have two 14 millimeter nuts and a 14 millimeter bolt here. And now we got to find a spot to um, hit against to get it removed. So you have a spot here. You got to kind of be careful. Um, this spot up here, you could usually get in. And also on the on the other side. And what I'm going to do is try and use this big chisel. Okay, this one's uh, more cooperative than I first anticipated it would be. And these things have a pretty giant input shaft. And I have seen these things break. It's, it's unusual, but um, it, it does happen. All right, what you didn't see is this bearing is, is something that fell and that goes in this drum. So now while I'm here, I'm gonna take the pump out. your pump gears these things look to be in great shape if you look this gear has a little lip on it so that goes here that kind of locates it obviously if you put that in backwards this, this pump is not going to turn at all and under here I'm not going to mess with this right now you have more more seals this is um, a housing and there's you know a big o-ring under here and that is again to keep the fluids from um, intermingling. I'll just take some of this stuff to get it out of the way. We're going to take the valve body out, obviously. It's another metal gasket. This is a two purpose drum here. We have a hub in here, we have another bearing here. So, the first set of clutches or like um, a reverse input clutch. And there's a cushion spring at the bottom that sits down there like that. Okay, so this is your driving clutch when you put the vehicle in reverse. I'm gonna put these all here for safekeeping. Okay, now the next set down is your high clutch. And this becomes relevant to performance we upgrade these and get a extra clutches in here because it's responsible for your two, three shift. All right, and these clutches look dark, but they're not really burnt. This is just um, the color of the factory clutches in these things. We're not gonna be able to get the rest out without the, the valve body, but um, this is what you have a uh, two fork clutch hub these are your two four clutches. They come on in second and fourth. And you have this little anti-rattle spring that in theory keeps them from clicking when they're not applied. But these things are applied in second and in fourth. And this is another clutch pack that we upgrade. We're able to get an extra clutch in there. And these also, I mean, they're dark, but they're not they're not burnt. 
this transmission was sent here mainly for an upgrade. So there's not, not too much wrong with it. On the bottom, you've got this kind of strange pressure plate. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to take it apart in a minute because to get to the rest of this, we have to take the valve body out because there's a seal that sits between the valve body and this clutch drum, you know, to keep the um, oil pressure contained. All right, I'm just gonna take this little Torrington bearing out of here so it doesn't get lost on us. I'll put it here for safekeeping. So now we're gonna have to flip it up. Make sure your sensors are out of the way before you start throwing thing, this thing around. <clears throat> and we got 20 or so 10 millimeter pan bolts. So judging by all this pink ass silicone on here, um, this pan was probably never off. Let's see how the fuck it is. All right. So if it's stuck, you want to not gouge the surface, but you want to get in here with something that you can kind of um, start breaking some of the silicone off. nastiness on here under here you can see this kind of position is going to be a little rocky but um to get you guys a good view well the filter is kind of uh just a screen in here Three little 10 millimeter bolts that hold it in. And then you also have a little tube here. And if you're working on a different year, this is going to vary. There's two completely different types of valve bodies in these things. Okay, so this is uh, what we'll call the second. Sometimes this just needs a little tap to get it out. Filter O-ring, very important. Now we're going to take out the rest of these bolts to, to get it out. And not only these bolts remove the valve box. So these ones that are black in color, most of those are bolts you don't. Um, this one here by the wiring harness, you know, is a ground strap, as is the one next to it. another ground strap here and that's all of our valve body bolts um, we're going to disconnect the wiring harness all right so that's these two and this one here and uh, this is a way to identify the valve body too um, different years aren't going to have red connectors they'll have different colors etc but um in 04 which is all by itself it doesn't interchange with any other year you're going to have these two red connectors and this is this seal that i kind of mentioned before 
Okay, that seals your 2-4 uh, clutch oil. Get it? It's our anti-rattle spraying that I showed you before. And then we have a couple things in here. We have a snap ring that holds this little return spring. Okay, and sometimes you can just work around it and take it out, but that's what that all looks like. And now we're going to take this 2-4 clutch housing out. And this is two pieces. We're not going to get into taking it apart now, but there's a, um, a piston and a drum, rubber seals on there. Now we have another set of clutches in here. And these are your low and reverse clutches, which are on and low and reverse. If you can see, there's a little tower down here, and there's springs under it. So now I'm going to flip this up and take that out. And also take note, there's a piston here, which I'll show you later. This thing could be a source of um, common complaints in these things. bunch of Allen screws in here. Kind of long ass bolts and there's washers that you don't want to lose. This is the last bolt. Now wait for it. Boom. That's our little tower falling out. That's a spring retainer and one of these little slinky springs. These are all the bolts that hold that support. And lastly, I'm going to see if I can get this piston out easily. Just the fact that that fell out like that means it might not be any good. Um, what you see sometimes in these is an actual chunk blows out of this and um, it's going to give you a no reverse. So this is something you definitely don't want to cheat on. When we do these here, this gets replaced in every one of them no matter what. I don't care how good it looks, it's got to get, get a new one. So this is kind of it for now. I mean, we're going to get into a lot more detail when we put it back together. Oh, wait, no, I forgot one thing. We still have this other drum. Scratch that. And this is another, um, not so much now, but uh, the earlier ones, there was an issue in here too. Okay, so we have a planetary. Another bearing. Sun gear. Then we have another bearing in here that rides right on the sun gear. All right, so it's a hardened surface. Our other planetary. 
there's a bearing race on here. And that all rides on this bearing. And then there's another race on here. And that's to uh, ride against the bearing that we took off earlier. And these are our low clutches. So it's basically a forward clutch. When you put this thing in gear, these come on and they give you forward. And these look to be in pretty good shape too. What the problem you run into here is this outer piston has two rubber seals on it and that the inner seal on it goes flat. And what happens is going to give you like a massive delay in drive when it's cold. You know, I think Subaru fixed this somewhere along the line. They've been making this style of uh, 4E AT since, I want to say, 1997 with the screw-on filter. But uh, when these were first out, we used to run into that a lot, where it would just not have any forward until it got hot. And all it is is a little $2 piece of rubber. Unfortunately, you have to go through all this trouble to get to it. And last thing, there's a cage bearing in here. And there's a sprag or one-way clutch, whatever you want to call it. That all rides on this tower as well. Turns in this direction. That locks in the other direction. So we'll get into some more when we put it back together. But for now, this is what we got. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.